Hello everybody, today I'm going to explain and demonstrate what is an equilateral contour. An equilateral contour or EQC is a measure of sound pressure level over the frequency spectrum such that each frequency of sound is perceived equally loud by the human listener. Now for humans, the audible hearing range is from 20 Hz to 20 kHz. So you might have a question, why do humans not hear all the frequencies equally loud? Well, that's for a reason. It's because humans do not have a flat frequency response. We have a non-linear frequency response. So what happens with that, you know? So our ears are biased towards certain frequencies over the others. So certain frequencies of sound, we can hear them very easily no matter how faint they are, where certain frequencies are too difficult to hear uh, unless they are very loud. So. That's the consequence of the non-linear frequency response, but in contrast, a high-fidelity studio microphone has a flat frequency response. Well, it is designed to have a flat frequency response so that it is not biased towards any frequency. You know, it has to capture the sound as is, and the last thing it has to do is to, you know, modify the sound. So that's why it has a flat frequency response so that it is not biased toward any frequency. Now, let's study the history of equal loudness contour. So Fletcher and Munson were the first people to perform experiments to determine the EQC curves. They performed it in 1933. Later, uh, Churcher and King performed experiments in 1937, but their results were not correlating with Fletcher's and Munson's. In 1956, Robinson and Datsun produced a new experimental determination of the EQC, which became the basis of the ISO 226 standard. But then the revision came in 2003, you know, so the latest revision is the ISO 226-2003, which is more in accordance with the Fletcher and Munson's curves rather than the robinson datsun curves. Now, it turns out that Fletcher and Munson used headphones for their experiments, meaning uh, the, you know, uh, listeners used to use headphones to listen to the tones, whereas in case of robinson datsun the listeners used to listen to the tones using speakers. So this is how the equal loudness contour look like. This is the latest revision. Um, we'll study this curve in great detail in this video. So let's look at Fletcher and Munson curves in detail. So you know they're the equal loudness contour determined by Fletcher and Munson 1933. So they were a result of a psychoacoustic experiment performed on a large group of subjects, you know, greater than 10,000. And the loudness values reported by the subject were then normalized to form the fletcher munson curves. Now, uh, we'll study the psychoacoustic experiment in detail. Okay, now, before we talk about this, we need to say that loudness is a psychological quantity. You know, it's not like sound pressure level. That, you know, sound pressure level is a physical quantity. Whether you measure the sound pressure level or I measure the sound pressure level, it's going to be the same because it, you know, we use a sound level meter to capture the sound pressure, right? Unless you have, you're going closer to the source, the sound pressure level may change, but it doesn't change with people. Loudness is not like that. It's a psychological quantity. It changes with people. Someone, uh, you know, what is loud for one person may not be that loud for another person. So it's a psychological quantity. We can't measure it using an instrument. So in order to perform, you know, in order to measure loudness, they perform this psychological experiment. So headphone was a primary device used for listening. So large group of people listen to pure tones at frequencies that span the audible spectrum from 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz. So the way they determine, you know, how loud each tone was. So first, uh, you know, the listeners listen to a one kilohertz reference tone. We'll we'll talk about why one kilohertz. Why not something else? So they listen to one kilohertz reference tone, and then they were made to listen to other frequencies and then asked to subjectively say how loud is the test tone relative to the reference tone. That's it. So that's what that was their role. So all they had to say was how loud is the test tone relative to the reference tone. So what is a unit of loudness? Well, it turns out that uh, you know, loudness has two units. One is phone and one is sone. So phone is the logarithmic unit of loudness, whereas sone is a linear unit of loudness. It is a subjective perception of sound pressure. Now two sounds with the same sound pressure level can still have different loudness. 
So, you know, where one is perceived, you know, to be louder than the other, despite having the same sound pressure level. We'll also discuss about this in this video. And two sounds with different frequency and having same loudness implies that both sounds are perceived equally loud by a human listener. So, we'll talk more about phone and zone. Phone, as you know, is the logarithmic unit. So, it is same as the sound pressure level in decibel. Meaning, a 1 kilohertz pure tone with a sound pressure level of 50 decibel has a loudness of 50 phone. So if it, if it had a sound pressure level of 60 decibel, it would have a loudness of 60 phone. Whereas sound is a linear unit, so uh, you know, there's a different conversion for that. So one sound is equivalent to 40 phones. And for every 10 phone increase, it corresponds to a doubling in loudness in sounds. So for example, if you have 50 phone, that's equivalent to 2 sound. 60 phone would be 4 zones, 70 phone would be 8 zones, and so on. The 1000 Hz or 1 kHz frequency is very important in acoustics. It is a reference tone in any acoustic experiment. It was a reference tone in the psychoacoustic experiment performed by Fletcher and Munson. So, why is it like that? It's because the loudness of a 1 kHz tone is exactly equal to the sound pressure level of the source. Now, this is not true for any other frequency except 1 kHz. And increasing or decreasing the sound pressure level doesn't boost or cut our loudness perception of 1 kHz. And 1 kHz is a standard frequency for calibration of microphones. There are other frequencies, but this is the most common frequency. If you take a look at the equal loudness contour, I've highlighted the region for 1 kHz. So if you look at the highlighted region from 10, 20 to 120, so th that is the loudness level and that is exactly coinciding with the uh, sound pressure level on the left. So the curves, you know, the equal loudness curves at 1000 Hertz are overlapping the horizontal lines that represents the sound pressure level. So as you can observe here, only at 1 kilohertz, the curves are coinciding with the horizontal line for every single, you know, loudness level. This is, that is not true for any other frequency at all. So now let's talk about ear resonance. Our ear also has a resonance. So, you know, because our ear's auditory canal can be approximated as a closed tube. And resonance occurs inside this tube. Now the average length of tube is 2.4 centimeter. If you calculate the frequency uh, for this particular tube, it turns out to be 3.7 kilohertz as a fundamental frequency, and the third harmonic is at 13,000 hertz. Now, this is the reason why we're sensitive to frequencies in the range of 2 kilohertz to 4 kilohertz. Now, we can look at this uh, in the equal loudness contour. So, I've highlighted the range between 2 kilohertz to 5 kilohertz, and you can observe a dip in the curve. Now, it means that, you know, no matter how faint the sounds are, we still end up listening to the sounds relative to the uh, other frequencies. So, our ears are biased towards frequencies in this bandwidth, the bandwidth that I've highlighted here. That's because our ear, uh, ear has a resonance in that bandwidth, and that's why we perceive sounds, uh, you know, more clearly in that bandwidth relative to the other frequencies. There is also a dip uh, you know, to the far right of the graph, and that is uh, around 13,000 hertz, where we had the third harmonic of our resonance. Now, in contrast, if you move toward the left end of the graph, you know, you can see that the curves are moving up, uh, and it's very difficult. What it means is very difficult to perceive bass, you know, if, if the bass is very faint. The bass uh, frequencies have to be very loud so as to perceive them. Okay, now how do I interpret the equal loudness contour? So every point on the curve represents a frequency at a particular amplitude. So if you look at the curve, every single point on the curve can be pointed to the x-axis and y-axis. Now the x-axis represents a frequency, here it's in logarithmic scale, and the y-axis you know, is about sound pressure level or the amplitude. So if you pick up any point on the curve, you can always point it to the x-axis where you'll get information about its frequency and to the y-axis where you'll get information about the amplitude or the sound pressure level. So all frequencies in a given curve are perceived equally loud. Yeah, if you pick up any curve, you point it toward 1 kilohertz and you can get an uh, you know, idea about what is the loudness level for that curve and that loudness level is the same no matter where you are at on that particular curve. 
The response to very loud sounds or high sound pressure level is more uniform except for the 2 kHz to 5 kHz range. As you move up, you know, toward high sound pressure levels, we can see that, you know, the curve is more or less, you know, flat except for the 2 kHz to 5 kHz range. But if you come down, you know, especially at low sound pressure levels, the curve is no, nowhere close to flat. I mean, like toward the base region, the curve is very steep. You know, it gets a little flat toward the mids and then it, it, there's a bump toward the treble region. So there are two examples here and I have plotted it uh, on the EQC and we will study it there. So this is the EQC and, you know, there are two new terms here. One is the threshold of hearing and the threshold of pain. Threshold of hearing is the minimum, uh, you know, sound pressure level required below which we will not hear anything. And threshold of pain is, you know, the maximum limit where ears can take before rupturing. So this is the first example. I have 100 hertz at 60 decibel sound pressure level and 1 kilohertz at 50 decibel sound pressure level. As you can observe here, you know, the sound pressure level is not the same. The 100 hertz frequency is, you know, having 10 decibel sound pressure level greater than 1 kilohertz. But still, they are perceived equally loud. I remember I said that two sounds can have, you know, different sound pressure levels or same sound pressure levels and still be perceived uh, less loud or more loud than the others. This is a good example. So why is it like that? Because here, our ears are more sensitive toward 1 kilohertz relative to 100 hertz and hence we perceive 1 kilohertz easily and it's a little difficult for us to perceive 100 hertz unless the sound pressure level is increased. Now this is a second example where 1 kilohertz is played at 50 decibel sound pressure level and 4 kilohertz is played at 40 decibel sound pressure level. Now clearly 4 kilohertz wins here because you know we're more um, you know our ears favor 4 kilohertz relative to 1 kilohertz and it is easier for us to listen to 4 kilohertz than 1 kilohertz so in this case despite 4 kilohertz being 10 decibel lower than 1 kilohertz we still end up hearing them at the same loudness level i'm going to demonstrate the loudness perception here using two sounds so the first sound is 1 kilohertz and the second is 100 hertz now both the sounds are played at the same sound pressure level and the conclusion we're going to draw from this is that despite them being played at the same sound pressure level, one of them is going to be perceived louder than the other. I'd recommend using headphones for best listening experience. The first sound I'm going to play is 1 kHz. And now the second sound which is 100 Hz. Now this is another demonstration uh, similar to the previous one but we were using different frequencies. So the first is 1 kHz and the second is 4000 Hz. Again both are played at the same sound pressure level and we're going to judge the loudness by listening to this. This was 1 kHz and I'm going to be playing 4 kHz. Alright, I hope you were able to judge the difference. Thank you for watching this video. Have a great day ahead.